Pick her hooves well, Nat. She has a way of collecting a lot of stone and dirt. Yep. <laughs> Mrs. Joe, you think you could ride her one day? Of course you can, Nat. <laughs> well, I was about your age when I learned to ride her. She's got a lot of spirit. But she's also very gentle. Books for our library. We don't have a library. <sighs> we do now. <laughs> Call me Ishmael. Isn't this great, Aunt Jo? Shakespeare, Milton, history books. <laughs> it's wonderful, but where did they all come from? <laughs> My father gave them to us. Hey, man, look Dear Joe. Joe. During my last visit to Plumfield, I took notice of the fact that your school's library, or lack thereof, could use some augmenting. So please accept these books as a gift to the Plumfield School for the further enrichment and enlightenment of its outstanding students. Your father's quite a philanthropist. What's a philanthropist? Well, there's a dictionary, Nan. Why don't you look it up? Lori has been so good to this school. There must be over 200 books here. Yeah, if you ask me, I think we're already adding the books. <laughs> you can never have too many books, Dan. Oh, here it is. Someone who shows a deep concern for mankind, especially as shown by acts of benevolence. Benevolence? It's in there. I think this is the finest gift we've ever received. Well, we better get started building some new bookshelves. Nick! Coyote got in the paddock. Spooked Penny. Please, Penny, calm down. A coyote was sniffing around the chicken coop. I scared it away, but it ran through the corral. Penny! Nat, look out! Penny! Wow! Penny! No, Penny, please. Penny! No, Penny! No! Saddle up and go after her. I'm going with you. Have gone. It's gonna be dark soon. We should start heading back. Penny knows the way home. She'll probably make her own way back. Well, she did the last few times she got lost, so. Well, there you go. Probably already there waiting for us. Let's go. Still no sign of her. It's pretty cold out tonight. 
She's a tough horse, Joe. She'll be all right. That she is. She's been through quite a few scrapes. You've had her a long time. I found her when I was 12. Found her? She was stuck in a bog. It was so deep, I didn't think we'd ever get her out. She was just a little thing, a yearling. There we were. Meg, Beth, and myself pushing, tugging, getting absolutely filthy while little Amy stood on dry ground laughing about the whole mess. <sighs> but we finally got her out. We searched all over Concord for her owner, but no one claimed her. So my father said that I could keep her. So I brought her home and I washed her coat and I brushed her down. And she was the most brilliant color copper I had ever seen. Just like a brand new penny. I'll go back out of first light. Keep looking. Thank you. Hey, Bess. I've got a book for you. Frankenstein. Very funny, Emil. <laughs> All right, I think we should all send Mr. Lawrence a note of thanks for his wonderful books. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I just thought of the perfect assignment to give you. Philanthropy. Nan looked it up. It means having a love of mankind demonstrated by acts of benevolence. Kindness. For your next assignment, I'd like each one of you to perform an act of benevolence and then give a speech to the class about it. You mean do something nice for someone? That's right. Be thoughtful, be creative, but most of all, be generous. And afterwards, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how good it'll make you feel. This is a stupid assignment. You know, I kind of like it. Yeah, you would. What do we have to do? Give a present to someone? No, Isaac. You don't necessarily have to give a gift to anyone. You just have to do something nice. I'm planning on giving a vocal recital. I'm going to sing a Schubert lighter for everyone. It's benevolence, Bess, not torture. Hey, Nan, maybe I'll give you my jackknife if you give me your pet mouse. You have a pet mouse? It's not about trading things, Tommy. It's like Franz said, you know, kindness and generosity. I have an idea. Let's make this more interesting. The person who does the nicest thing, the others do his or her chores for the next week. That's a great idea. I don't know. Wait a minute. Who's going to judge this little contest of yours? Well, Franz is going to grade the papers, so the highest grade wins. Sounds good to me. Me too. I suppose so. Why not? <laughs> Dan, have you seen Nick? I uh, think still so. looking for Penny. He's gonna find her, Miss Jill. I know he will. I see you've already started on the bookshelves. Yeah, I figured I could jump on it. Well, have you found any books that interest you yet? Uh, no. <laughs> not really, I'm not much of a reader. Well, I'll bet I could find a book that would interest you. Yeah, I probably could. But you know me, uh, I'd rather be outside doing stuff instead of sitting inside reading a book. Well, I can understand that. I mean, there are a lot of wonderful things to experience out there. Yeah. But I find that when I read a book, it opens my eyes to things that I may not have noticed before. And that makes me appreciate the world outside my window all the more. She was stuck in the mud, just past Walden Pond. Oh, you're always getting yourself into trouble, aren't you, Penny? Hey, Nick, why am to her legs? Ah, must have banged him when she was running off. I'll clean and wrap them, keep an eye on them, make sure they don't get infected. I'll help you. But aside from being cold and exhausted, I think she's all right. 
Thank you, Nick. Hello, Tommy. Hey, Mrs. Joe. I made you some tea. You made me some tea? Yeah. Well, the ways you helped me clean up the first cup after I spilled it. Oh, I see. Thank you. Probably got a little cold walking over here from the house. I went real slow. You did? Good. And I put some sugar in it, too. Oh. Well, that was nice of you, Tommy. Yeah, that's real generous, ain't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, guess I'll go now. All right. Good night, sweetheart. Night, Mrs. Joe. All right. That'll do it for tonight. Should I bring some fresh hay down from the loft? No, she's got enough. Well, is there anything else I can do for you? Nope. That's it. Well, are you hungry? I can make something to eat. Uh, no, Emil. <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. How is she? Glad to be back in a warm barn. You can be sure of that. I should be back to normal in no time. I found it. What? That book I thought you'd like. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. It was published last year. It's very popular. Nick, have you heard of it? No. Oh, I have. A friend of my uncle's read it. It's about the submarine that goes around attacking ships. A what? A uh, submarine. It's, it's like a boat that goes underwater. It even gets attacked by a sea monster. A sea monster? It's quite a story, Dan. Full of adventure. Can I read it, too? Of course, Emil. Nick? Maybe you'd like to read it as well. I'm sure a good sea story would interest you. Uh, I wish I could, but I can't. Come on, Nick. Surely you can spare some time in the evening to read with the boys. No, nah, that's not what I'm talking about. When I say I can't, I mean I can't read. You, you can't read? Nope. Not at all? Not a lick. Well, then how do you write your name? I don't. Guys, come on. I grew up on a farm, went to sea when I was 15. School just wasn't a part of my life. Well, now that you're working at a school, maybe you can make it part of your life and learn how to read now. No, thanks. Never had a need for it growing up. Don't really see the need for it now. He can't read at all? Not a word. He can't even write his own name. Mrs. Joe, did you know Nick can't read? Yes. I did. Well, I can't imagine going through life being unable to read. No, think about it. Walking down the street, can't even read the signs? I wonder how he gets around. Yeah, it must be hard. I'm wrong. No. Nothing wrong, Nick. I think we all need to remember how fortunate we are. Some people growing up, education is not an option. She's right. People like Nick had it pretty tough their whole life. Coming up poor, losing the folks when they're just kids. He had to do everything on his own. If you ask me, he's done a pretty good job of it. He's been around the world. He's seen places that mostly only read about some stupid book.
I made porridge for everyone. It's my gift to you. Good. Cuts are healing nicely. Don't think we have to worry about infection. Good. But she's still shivering. Have to keep her covered and make sure she's out of the draft. And keep her out of the mud. About the children earlier. I know what they were talking about. I heard them. I didn't mean any harm by it. No big deal. Listen, Nick. Have you ever given any thought to learning how to read? Why? Why? Because reading is such a valuable tool in life. It's an essential tool. It can't be that essential. I haven't needed it. Well, maybe not. But your life could be that much better with it. Nick, reading provides us with the means to be able to reach beyond ourselves and our circumstances. Therefore, giving us new opportunities. I've had plenty of opportunities in my life. You don't understand. No, I don't. I don't know why you got to go making something out of this one. I already told you. It's no big deal. But I promise you, if you learn how to read, you will be thrilled with the new world that opens up to you. Your life will be the richer for it. So what, I got to sit up in the classroom with the kids? No, I'll give you private lessons. No one else has to know unless you want them to. Nick, you don't seem like the type of person that would turn his back on a challenge. Who knows? Maybe this could be your next big adventure. Ah, oh, it means that much to you. <laughs> All right, then. My sweet thing. All right, class, we'll begin this morning with arithmetic. Please take out your pencils and your paper and copy down these problems. So, have you done anything generous yet? I'm still trying to figure out what to do. I made Mrs. Joe some tea. So that's easy. Hey, what about my porridge? I worked all morning on it. And I almost choked. That stuff was awful. Well, what have you done? Yeah. I helped Nick with Penny. You would have done that anyway. He's right, Emil. You gotta think of something better than that. And you're gonna have to do better than that porridge. Excuse me. You have problems to copy down. So, teach me. Oh, Nick, you can't start off with this. It's much too difficult. We'll start with this chart to learn the alphabet. And then we'll move on to this reading primer to learn small words and sentence construction. It'll be fun. You'll see. This is an A. What's that say? The pretty kitty. The pretty kitty is soft. The pretty kitty likes to play. I love the pretty kitty. I don't think this is going to work. Nick, come on. You have to start off simple. The pretty kitty? I'm sorry. It was designed for young children. Look, we won't use the primer. How's that? Now, please. Just sit back down. Sit back down. <sighs> All right, watch this. This is an N. As in navigate. Okay? This is an I. Iceberg. C. Uh, cannon. And this last one is a K. As in pedal. Kitty. No, but look. Look. When you put these letters together, That spells Nick. Nick. That's your first word. It's 
Joe? I just went to check on Penny, and she sounds strange. She's coughing, wheezing. I'd better ride for the vet. The lungs are filling. This animal has pneumonia. Exposure to the cold air outside overnight is no doubt what brought it on. It can present itself very quickly. What's critical now is to make certain the horse is well cared for, which will uh, require your assistance. Anything, Doctor. You'll need to mix up several doses of sweet spirit of nitre. Mix half an ounce of this in a pint of cold water and feed it to the horse three times a day, morning, noon, and night, until the animal seems stronger. You'll also need to thoroughly rub down the legs. Rub down the legs? Rubbing increases the circulation. You should also apply a mustard plaster over the lungs. If the horse responds to the treatment, the disease should run its course anywhere from nine to 12 days. Keep the animal warm and away from any drafts. We don't want this developing into pleurisy. What's that? A much more serious condition. Let me know if anything changes. We will. Thank you, Dr. Casti. She's worse. I get the gun. It's pleurisy. I'm afraid there's nothing to be done. The horse should be put down. It's the only humane thing to do. If you like, I can take the animal and we'll... No! We'll do it. I'm terribly sorry. before the children wake.
And that can teach me anything from the fly book you're reading? <laughs> Check on Penny, she was gone. She got worse overnight. Nothing could be done. I'm sorry, boys. Mrs. Joe? We just want you to know that we're really sorry about Penny. If there's anything we can do for you, just let us know. Thank you. All of you. Penny was very dear to me, and I'll miss her very much. But I think the best thing for me is to try and get things back to normal. How's the supply in the loft? Uh, we could use more, as usual. I'll try to get into town later and get some. I was hoping that maybe later this afternoon we could do another reading lesson. Ah, uh, today's not a good day. Got a lot of stuff to do. All right, then maybe tomorrow. Sure. OK, after breakfast? All right. She's teaching you to read? Yep. I figure it's time for me to find out what all the fuss is about. Yeah, well, you're not missing much, believe me. <sighs> Seems like the more words you learn, the more confusing it gets. And some of it just doesn't make any sense. Like, um, the K in knife. K? Yeah, it usually has a hard sound, like in, um, kid or kite. Or kitty. Right. So anyway, the K in knife is silent. Silent? Yeah, you don't pronounce it. It's like it's not even there. But you better make sure you put it there when you spell it. That don't make any sense. Exactly. So what are you so worried about? The assignments due the day after tomorrow. I want to make sure my generous act is the best. Nan's going into town tomorrow. Said there's lots of generous things to do there. Mm, maybe I'll go into town, too. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'll think of something. But it'll definitely be more generous than anything Nan can come up with. You going to go to town, Nat? Dan, what are you doing here? Uh, Penny? Penny! Easy. <laughs> Still real sick. But I... I was gonna. Then I got to thinking maybe the vet was giving up on her too quick. And I don't know how much she means to Mrs. Joe. Oh. What are you going to do? Got permission from the farmer here to leave her in the stable for the time being. Worked with some army vets in the war. Saw horses with conditions like this come back from the brink of death. Penny's tough. Figured she might come back, too. Mrs. Joe's going to be so happy. No. You don't tell Mrs. Joe nothing. Still a very strong chance this horse won't survive. I don't want Mrs. Joe getting her hopes up. Yeah, keep quiet. Can I help you, Nick? Sure. I've done her legs while I'm mixing medicine. Right. Oh, thank you. So kind of you. 
Let me oh, give I you. couldn't take that, ma'am. Are you sure? It was my pleasure. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute, I was gonna help her. I got here first. Give me that box. No, she gave it to me. Didn't we? Well, yes, actually. No fair, Nan. Get your own lady. I saw her first. I got to her first. I got her fair and square. No, you didn't. She's mine. Give me that. My groceries. Look out! Mom's right here with the mustard. Still breathing real hard. I can see it in her flanks. I tried to make her cough, but she won't. What's that mean? Don't want to move her chest. It hurts too much. Well, do you want me to mix together some more pain medicine? Yeah. I was hoping to see some improvement today, but she's still getting worse. Where have you been? Uh, I had some things to do in town. Oh, well, I missed you this morning. I thought we were going to have a reading lesson. Right. Sorry. Well, perhaps we can do it tomorrow, then. I don't think so. I'm going to be busy again. Oh. Uh. Nick, if you don't want to do this, then just tell me. No, I do. It's just... Uh, because this really isn't very important to me. I'm just doing this for you. I know. It's just... Now's not a good time. I see. Well, if you want to give up, then that's fine with me. I'm not giving up. Really? Because it sure seems that way to me. <sighs> fine. I'm giving up. Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> Well, at least you're admitting it instead of hiding behind excuses. Don't you ever get tired of being so high and mighty? Always got to prove you're right. Always got to show everyone just how smart you are. This isn't about me. Nick, I'm doing this for you. No, you're trying to make me into something you want me to be. I'm not trying to make you into anything. I'm simply offering you the chance to better yourself. Well, I like myself just fine. Really? Well, then fine. Don't change. Don't learn. If you don't feel the need to improve your life, then just keep doing what you've been doing. I guarantee you, you will always be the same. Franz? Have you seen Nick? He left a little while ago. Where did he go? He wouldn't tell me. He just said he had some things to do. Dan went with him. Dan? But it's a school day. I know. What's Penny's worse this morning, Nick? Probably best to put her down. Now, yeah, well, I'm sure Mrs. Joel will appreciate everything you're doing. Ah, oh, how's the ring going? It's not. It ain't for me. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be working at Plumfield. Not too good for the school's image, you know? Are you still thinking of going back to the sea someday? Yeah, someday. Say so you were 15 when you first went to sea? Yeah, just a kid. I'm only 15. Then you get your schooling finished before you go boarding any ships. 
But you didn't. I mean, I, I like Plumfield and all. Just lately, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Uh, I mean, uh, all you really need from life is experience to pick up along the way, right? Isn't that the way it's been with you? I was in town late yesterday. And I ran into Edna Gerson, who normally is the kindest, sweetest little old lady in town. But yesterday, she was furious. It seems she was accosted by three children fitting the description of students at this school. They said they were trying to help her. But in the process, they ruined her groceries and nearly got her run over by a carriage. Take a good look at this word. Nowhere in its definition does it mention the word selfishness or personal gain. It is not about competition or one-upmanship, but that is exactly what you have made it about. I hope one day you will understand the true meaning of the word. Because you sure don't understand it now. The whole chest is filling now. Getting worse. I don't know. I saw an army vet once stick a tube in a horse's chest to drain fluid. Said he'd seen it work a few times. At the time I saw him do it, it didn't. Yo, maybe we should at least try that. Maybe Dr. Cassie knows how to do it. Better hurry then. She don't got much time. Is Dr. Cassidy here, ma'am? It's urgent. No, I'm afraid he went to Boston for the week. Ma'am, we need to know about a procedure to help drain a horse's chest. Now, does the doctor have any books or anything that we can look through? <clears throat> it is also possible, although rarely successful and therefore not recommended, to puncture near the bottom of the chest with a, a small trocar and cannula and let the fluid out of the chest. It gives instructions how to do it. Trocar and cannula? In the case, I'll get them for you. Still not back? No. Well, I'm sure there's a good reason for their absence. It's not so much that they're gone that worries me whether or not they're coming back. <laughs> Says you can drain as many as three buckets of fluid. All right, I'm ready. Make the puncture at the bottom of the chest between the eighth and the ninth rib. It's OK, Penny. Procedure is successful. Improvement can be expected within one to three days. However, a complete recovery would take about a month. We'll have to keep our fingers crossed then. Yeah. Well, sir. Good thing Dr. Cassie had his book, huh? Good thing you were here to read it. in school. I know. It's just that uh, Nick needed my help. With what? Uh, some things. In town. In town? I was in town today. I didn't see you there. Well, we made a lot of stops. 
Yeah, we're moving around a lot. Where is Nick? Dan? Please. Do not lie to me. Where is Nick? Miss Joan. I can't. Why not? Please. All right, then off to bed with you. We'll discuss this in the morning. She was a tough horse. Just figured she needed a little more time. She's still pretty weak, but she's definitely on the mend. Oh, don't want to forget. Got some. Did you make this yourself? Nah. Dan helped with the letters. I'll put it out above her stall. Thank you. <laughs> now you understand. Immediately, one of those long t ten tentacles. Oh, tentacles. Thanks, Nat. Uh, tentacles came sliding through the opening like a serpent, while 20 others flailed about overhead. <laughs> With one blow from his axe, Captain Nemo cut through the, the formidable tentacle which slithered, squirming down the steps. Good night, Penny. Ha, ha, ha.